This is question 10 from a series of videos taking a look at the Edexcel practice papers. Here we're told a circular clock face centre O has a minute hand OA and an hour hand OB. We're told that OA is equal to 10 centimetres. We're told that OB is equal to 7 centimetres. We can see that we've got this drawn onto our diagram. We're asked to calculate the length of AB when the hands show 5 o'clock. So we're looking to try and find the distance between this point here and the point down the bottom. Okay, so essentially what we've actually got is we've got a non-right-angled triangle. So that should immediately, as soon as I see that, I'm trying to find a length on a non-right-angled triangle. So immediately what I would be thinking there is I need to think about trigonometry. And specifically, it's going to either be the sine rule or the cosine rule. Now, in order to use either of those rules, the first thing that I'm going to need to have is I need one more piece of information. At the moment, I've just got a length and another length. So I need one more piece of information. I need to know what this angle is here. So if I think about this carefully, well, this, if I were to go all the way around, that would be a full turn and that would be 360 degrees. And what we've done, well, what a clock is, is basically, it's just split 360 degrees into 12 parts. So if it's at five o'clock, what we can say is that that angle between the minute hand and the hour hand is going to be five twelfths of 360. So 5 twelfths of 360, 1 twelfth would be 30, and so 5 twelfths would be 150 degrees. So that angle there is 150. Now what I'm going to do, just to make this a little bit clearer, is I'm going to redraw this diagram. So we've got a length of 10 centimetres and a length of 7 and we've got an angle of 150. And then I'm going to do all of my workings over here. So I've got 150 as the angle. And then I know that this length here is 10 and that this length here is 7. So what I now need to do is I need to decide, am I going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule? And for this, I've got two lengths, 10 and 7, which are trapping an angle. And what I should recognise when I see this is that this indicates that I will be needing to use the cosine rule. So to use the cosine rule, what I always suggest, and let's just write out the cosine rule first. This is a this rule you need to know off by heart. You're not given this in a formula book or anything like that. And the cosine rule is that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So let's start labelling up our triangle with a, b and c. So the angle that you are given when using the cosine rule or the angle that you're trying to find Always label that with a capital A. And then the length opposite, we label with a lowercase a. Then, after that, when using the cosine rule, it doesn't really matter what you label the rest of the corners as. So I'm going to label this as B. And then the length opposite this angle, lowercase b. And then the this angle here, capital C and then the length opposite, and that bit is important, the length opposite as lowercase c. So the way that we label our triangles, we label the angles with, um, with capital letters, and then we then label the lengths opposite those angles with the lowercase version of that letter. So all that's left for us to do is now substitute into this formula. So what we're saying is that, and I'm going to get the calculator to do this rather than write it all down. 
what I'm going to be doing here is just substituting in. So we're saying that this length here that I'm trying to find is going to be b squared, so 7 squared, plus 10 squared, so plus c squared, minus 2 times b, which is, uh, we said, 7, times c, which we said was 10, times by the cos of the angle, which is 150 degrees. So typing that in is going to give us 270. Now, what we should recognise here is that this is not going to be our final answer, because that would make no sense whatsoever. We'd be saying that that length there is 270. And the reason why that is not our final answer yet is because that, what we've just typed in, is equal to a squared. So to figure out what a on its own is going to be, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to square root that answer. So square rooting that answer gives me an answer of 16.4390824. So let's just check the question. It says give your answer correct to three significant figures. So correct to three significant figures. We're going to call that 16.4. So the distance between A and B, 16.4 centimetres.